dear students first today we are going to discuss about the classification of dice before going to the classification of dice first we shall have we shall discuss the introduction of dice dice are colored organic compounds that are used to impart color to various substrates including paper leather fur hair drugs cosmetics waxes pieces plastics and textile materials so one way or another dyes to dyes are used to color various substances to import color to various substances a dye is a colored compound normally used in solution which is capable of being fixed to a fabric that is a textile substrate the compound to be used as a dye the dye must possess the following four properties the very important properties of a compound to be a dye or it should have a basic color or a standard color and it should be soluble in water and ability to be absorbed and being retained by the fiber or to be chemically combined with it so these are the first three prime and the next is the ability to withstand the washing dry cleaning and exposure to light that is the fastest property of a dye stuff is the next important parameter and next the dye has a color due to the presence of certain chromo chromophoric groups and it is being fixed proper pro property of the property to the acid or basic group such as oh so3 h nh2 nr2 etc and the polar oxocrop makes the dye water soluble and binds the dye to the fabric by interaction with the oppositively charged groups of the fabric structure especially when it is cellulose it may be the o minus group cello minus group present on the uh, cellulosic material when it is being immersed in water coming to the classification based on the source of materials that is the classification of dyes a very common classification of the dye stuff is based on the source from which it is being manufactured accordingly the classification could be natural dyes and synthetic dyes that is the dyes are classified as natural dyes and synthetic dyes based on its origin coming first to natural dye natural dyes are dyes that are colorants derived from plants in got the breaks or minerals it mean the natural dye can be derived from plant origin animal origin or from certain mineral origin and the majority of natural dyes are vegetable dyes from plants majority of the natural dyes are vegetable vegetable dyes from plant sources example the natural dye can be extracted from the roots of the plant certain berries or bark leaves and wood of the plant a few example for natural dyes or you can extract dye from a normal rose flower or a jasmine flower or a beetroot carrot etc apart from this the other organic sources include certain fungi and lichens few images of those uh, sources for natural dyes has been shown in this ppt also coming next to synthetic dyes the name itself indicate that it is being synthetic it mean that it is a man made dye it mean that it is a man made dye almost all the colors that you see today are synthetic dyes synthetic dyes are used everywhere in everything from clothes to paper from food to wood this is because they are cheaper to produce brighter more color fast and easy to apply to fabric a few example for synthetic dyes are certain acid dyes or so dyes basic dyes modern dyes etc coming to the exact flow chart for the classification of your dyes dyes based on the origin are first classified into natural dyes and synthetic dyes the natural dyes when it is uh, the natural dyes are further classified into dyes extracted from plants and dyes obtained from animals and one example for dyes from plants is the madder which is obtained from the madder root and from animals the main example is your tyrian purple which is being obtained from the snake safe snakes and coming next to synthetic dyes synthetic dyes can be further classified into non azo dyes and azo dyes most of the synthetic dyes are azo dyes and only a few class of uh, synthetic dyes comes under non azo dyes so coming exactly to the azo dyes these azo dyes can further be classified into acid dyes basic dyes reactive dyes dispersed dyes sulfur dyes vat dyes and coming further to the classification of 
reactive dyes especially the reactive dyes can further be classified based on their chemical constitution that is the chemical structure of the dye and based on the application process coming first to the classification of reactive dyes based on chemical constitution it can be reactive dyes that is the cold brand reactive dyes and vinyl sulfone um, dyes and that is your ramazol dyes mixed dye that is monochlorotriazid and vinyl sulfone bifunctional reactive dyes then heterocyclic halogen containing dyes so this is about the classification of reactive dyes based on their chemical constitution and coming to the classification of reactive dyes based on their application process they can be classified into three types as cold brand dye which is being applied at a temperature around 25 to 50 degrees celsius that is in the room temperature range itself and medium brand dye that is being applied around the temperature of 40 to 60 degrees celsius that is your vinyl sulfone dyes and the next is the h brand dyes which is being applied to the cellulosic material at 60 to 90 degrees celsius and coming to the properties of dyes which we have discussed earlier okay we will just recollect these points and then we will move on to the further slides as stated earlier the important properties are color solubility ability to be absorbed and ability to withstand the washing dry cleaning and expo and light uh, next we are going to discuss about the pigments as like dyes the pigments are the next uh, coloring substances which are widely used to import color to our textile materials so so the pigments are mostly inorganic substances and these pigments are of two types as organic pigments and inorganic pigments so the organic pigments may, may be polycyclic pigments so pigments anthraquinone pigments triaryl uh, carbonyl pigments and coming to inorganic pigments white pigments color pigments and these color pigments can further be of ultramarine cadmium and iron oxide these inorganic pigments especially the color pigments are widely used in our textile industry and coming to the properties of pigments and uh, uh, these uh, pigments with, uh, will not have any chromophoric group uh, and oxochromic group in it no oxochromic group no direct affinity towards the textile material and here the binder is required for the fixation process and it is being applicable to all kinds of fabrics or textile materials and uh, generally uh, because of uh, the usage of binder the rubbing fasteners is poor in the case of pigments and uh, water washing fasteners light fasteners is very good in the case of pigments and it is insoluble in water and other solvents like widespread perchloroethylene trichloroethylene carbon tetrachloride etc and most of the pigments are azobes compounds besides that it may be inorganic oxide inorganic salt thalassemic metal compounds etc and most of the pigments are toxic some are orally toxic some are term terminal to toxic some causes eye irritation or etc and coming to the selection of dyes for dyeing process how to select the acid dye when we are go when we are going for the dyeing of our textile materials with acid dyes what are what are the parameters to be considered is that uh, acid is excellent to achieve bright colors and it is not fast to washing but able to withstand the chemicals used in dry cleaning so this is the general property of acid dyes based on this property we have to select the dye for the dyeing process coming to chrome dyes they have excellent color fastness to washing and uh, light however the resulting colors are somewhat dull so in such a way we have to select the chrome dyes and coming next to basic dye which is the one and only cationic dye bright shades are easily achieved and generally color fastness to washing and light is good fabrics colored with this type of dye are usually resistant to cracking it means the rubbing fastness the color will not rub off from friction especially this basic dye is used to dye our silk material uh, and we can uh, achieve excellent uh, dark and bright shades when we dye silk fabric with this basic dye and next comes our direct dye uh, it has poor color fastness to laundry as well as to light penetration and dry cleanable in most cases as this dye is having poor fastness to washing and light so dry cleaning is the only way to get a good uh, a good fastness proper to uh, retain the good fastness property and coming next to dispersed dye which is the only non ionic dye the potential for color fastness varies according to the fibers being colored 
colophosphorus to crop in perspiration and dry cleaning is generally good when we uh, go with a dyeing of dispersed dyes. The reactive dyes, the reactive dyes is the only dye which forms the covalent bond with our textile substrate and this is perfect for bright colors, good overall color values except the chlorine which eliminate it as, as, as a useful agent in the dyeing of swimsuit fabrics. And coming next to naphtha, when we in the with naphtha we can achieve bright colors, colorfulness to light varies. Depending upon the specific makeup of the dye, colorfulness uh, to washings be considered. And coming next to uh, bad dyes, they have excellent colorfulness to sunlight, washing, and perspiration. And next we are going to discuss about the theory of dyeing which is a very important factor when we go for the dyeing of textile materials. The, coming to the theory of dyeing, the general theory of dyeing explains the interaction between the dye and the fiber, water and the dye auxiliary which is being used in the dyeing process. So it is the force of repulsion which are developed between the dye molecules and water and the force of attraction which are developed between the dye molecules and the fibers. These forces are responsible for the dye molecules leaving the aqueous liquid uh, entering and attaching themselves to the polymers of the fibers. As you all know, all the textile uh, fibers are either natural polymers or synthetic polymers in one way or another. And coming first to the affinity, it is nothing but it is the difference between the chemical potential of dye in its standard state in the fiber and the corresponding chemical potential in the dye bath. That is, the tendency of a dye to move from dye bath into the substrate. It is expressed in joule or calorie per minute and quantitative expression of, is, in, is another way of quantitative expression of substantivity. Coming next to substantivity, this is nothing but the attraction between a substrate, I mean our textile material and the dye or other substance under the precise condition of test whereby the test is selectively, ex I mean our dye is selectively extracted from the application media of the substrate. Here it is the qualitative expression of affinity. Substantivity depends on the temperature of the process, the type of the fiber which is being used for the dyeing process, the concentration of the electrolyte present in the dye body. And substantive dyes are affinity and are mostly soluble. 